Once you have completed the installation and registration process for McGamut, you should have your startmg6 file saved in a work folder on your hard drive. Before you begin your first McGamut session, do consider the importance of this file. The startmg6 file is the record keeping device for McGamut, and in many cases the file you will be required to turn in as part of your grade. Follow these steps to ensure that all of your work will be saved. Before you double click this file to launch McGamut, notice the name of the file and where it is saved on the hard drive. To begin a McGamut session, you should always start with this same exact file each time. Additionally, you can change the view of the window to List or Details to see the date modified for your Start MG6 file. This date should always be the date of your last session, or in this case, the date we saved the file to the hard drive. Okay, enough talk. Let's open the file by double clicking on it. After double clicking the Start MG6 file, you will first get a graphic cartoon splash screen while the application checks to see if the McGamut CD is in the drive. You will then see the check name and presets window. Although it will become commonplace in the future to automatically click OK in this window to go on, let's take some time now to view the check name and presets window in detail. At the top should be your name. This seems quite obvious, but be aware, anyone can change the outside name of the startmg6 file, but the inside name you see in this window was encrypted in the file when you registered and can never be changed. So regardless of what the outside name of the startmg6 file is, always make sure your name appears in this window. Typically there will be a date in the next line, and that date should correspond to your last McGamut session. However, since this is our first session, it reads New File. Later, we will launch another session and check this date out at that time. The default preset setting for all new files is Original Presets MG6.MGP or Original Presets 2003.MGP if you have upgraded from an old Start 2003 file. Unless your instructor has sent a custom presets file for you to use, this original file will be the presets your Start MG6 file will utilize. If you have received a custom presets file from your instructor, then you will need to save that file in a work folder on your hard drive. Then select Change Presets from this window. Locate the file, double click on it, or click once and then select Open. An alert appears making sure you do indeed wish to change presets. Select yes and from this point on the presets file you loaded will be the default presets for this start mg6 file and its name should appear as the current presets file in the check name and presets window. Now we have the option to go on by selecting OK or we can select No and go back to select another Start MG6 file. Why would we want to do that? Well, if, for instance, any of the information in this window was incorrect, the last thing we want to do is spend hours in a file and have it go to waste. There is no way for you, your instructor, or any of the McGamut staff to copy work out of one file and paste it into another. So always make sure you are working in the correct file. After selecting OK this first time, you will get an alert window which suggests you start in practice mode, informs you about the help menu, and lets you know that McGamut will be utilizing the default MIDI sound source on your computer. Once you select OK from that window, McGamut performs a sound check and gives you some basic information about adjusting and troubleshooting any sound problems that you may run into. Select OK and you're in the main interface window. From here you can choose to work in any of the six main areas intervals, scales, chords, rhythmic, melodic, or harmonic dictation. Before going on, however, let's quickly take a look at Get Stats, which pulls up the Show Stats 4 window where you can choose to get stats for your work in oral training, written, or keyboard drills. Or you can select Go Back to Return to the Main Interface window. 
Each of the stats info windows are very similar. For this exercise, let's choose Oral Training. Here again in the Oral Training Drill Stats Info window, notice your name is embedded into the file. You are currently at level 1 in each section. You are 0 for 0, having tried 0 in each section, and you have not spent any time in any of these sections. Select Go to Written Stats and you'll discover the same in the Written Drill Stats Info window. Select Go to Keyboard Stats and you'll discover the same in the Keyboard Drill Stats Info window. The only difference is that in the Written and Keyboard windows there are only three sections, Intervals, Scales, and Chords. Whereas when you select Go to Oral Training Stats, to go back to the Oil Training Drill Stats Info window, you will see that it contains info about rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic dictation also. Now it's time to go exploring. Select Continue to go back to the main interface. In the main interface, select Intervals. Then in the Choose Drill window, select Oral Training. This brings up the Choose Level window. Notice that when you toggle back and forth between regular and practice, the screen changes because in regular or mastery mode, you must do the levels sequentially. Whereas while in practice mode, you may go directly to any level. You may select the exit button in this window or inside any section to go back to the main interface. For the purpose of this video, we will remain in the intervals oral training section in regular mode. Before you go on, make sure the radio button for regular mode is selected and click OK. Once inside any section in regular mode, notice you are automatically in level 1 or the lowest level you have not completed and that the go on and exit buttons are now grayed out in the window. The mastery levels are set up so that you must answer the current question before you are permitted to exit or go on to another exercise. Before you select play to listen to the example for the first time, look around the window one more time. Notice how many hearings you will get for this example, what the goal is for the level, and what the choices are for your answer. Now select play and give it your best. To identify the interval, select among the choices given by clicking on one of them. Then using the cursor in the staff just right of the given note, Click in the staff to enter the correct note to complete the interval. Once you feel you have the correct answer, select Check Answer. McGammit will grade the answer as correct with a green box or incorrect with a red X. If any part of your answer is marked wrong, you can change your notation or identification to correct it and then click Check Answer again. Then McGammit will give you the correct answer and permit you to play it and your answer for comparison. At this point you may choose to go on or exit. Remember if you choose to go on in mastery mode you must complete the next exercise before you can exit. If you're doing well see if you can complete an entire level. If you need to take a break select exit to return to the main interface. Before you quit, however, let's go back to Get Stats and then Aural Training to see how you did as McGammit recorded your efforts. Take a mental picture of the Aural Training Drills Stats window for the next time. For your information, if you select Continue, you will return to the main interface. You may then select Quit from either the Stats window or the main interface. The final step in every session is to make a backup file. If no work was done in the session, or if you like playing with fire, select no and you're done. By selecting yes, you are given the opportunity to save a backup anywhere on your hard drive or another drive. In the save window, McGammon automatically names your backup file with the current date. For now, you may save the file in the same folder as your original MG6 file. But for future use, we recommend you create a separate folder or get into the practice of saving the file to another drive. As is the case with any work you do on a computer, always ask yourself, what will be the result if my hard drive crashes tonight? Is all of your work gone 
or do you at least have some of it saved on another drive, read write CD, or flash drive? After selecting save, you will get a final alert letting you know that the file has been saved with the specific name. Select OK. Before you head out, let's start another session so you can get into the habit of managing your start MG6 file correctly. Go back to the same exact work folder where your original start MG6 file is saved. Notice the date modified for the file. Is that the date and time when you quit your last session? Also, make sure you are selecting the original file and not the backup. The name of the original file is first name, last name, start MG6. There should be no backup of and no date showing in the name of the file. With this in mind, double click the correct file and launch McGammon. You will again get the graphic cartoon splash screen and then see the check name and presets window. Check for your name and check that the last date used is indeed the date of your last session. If so, select OK in the check name and presets window and then OK in the check sound window. Once you're in the main interface, select Get Stats and then Aural Training. Are those the same stats you saw at the end of the last session? If so, you're set. If not, you're the wrong file. Quit and go back to your hard drive to find the correct one. And finally, now you may select Quit to finish up or continue to go back to work. Notice that if no examples were attempted and no time spent in the exercises, you will not be asked to make a backup file. That's it. You have successfully finished your first session of McGammon. Always proceed in this fashion and you should have no problems managing your Start MG6 file.